What's up everybody? In today's video, we're gonna talk about three different ways that you can personalize your cold emails. Well, not just been cold emails, be LinkedIn, social media messages, really any type of personalization you wanna do on Outbound. Now for a bit of context, we need a channel. Hi, my name is Michael. I've been doing B2B lead gen for seven years. I've grown multiple of my own successful agencies, and now I help other agencies set up their own B2B lead gen processes. So let's go ahead and get into the video. We can go over these three different methods and I'll explain some pros, cons, as well as use cases. Starting out with the first, I'm gonna call this a general reference personalization. So this is me using things like city, time, day, or a standardized copy and paste merge field for personalization. So let's go ahead and break down some examples here. So let's say city. So for example, if we were building out a list, we could add an extra merge field, merge field meeting a piece of information, Excel sheet that's being imported into your campaign for city. So something like my first name, saw that company name was based in city name and dot, dot, dot. We could add some personalization. And funny enough, I saw a video on that city before, or I first name, saw a company name was based in city name. And funny enough, I have a cousin who lives there. What, whatever it might want to be, I wouldn't recommend actually lying, but sometimes I might say it's been like, it was based in city name and looks like they have beautiful nature. Like whatever it might be, um, you just add some personalization based around the general idea that we're going to use city name. Another easy one is time. You can segment your list by time zone and you can add in fields relating to time. Now this is not complete personalization. You have to consider will most people do this in their cold emails? No, they won't. So it's a nice way to feel um, personal. So we could say, good morning. First name, hope oh, I'm not catching you too early with this email. And we have a different one for good afternoon and good evening or even Good night. You get the idea. We're, we're adding personalization based on times. So we're segmenting our list based on time zone. And I bet most people listening to this have never received a cold email sort of good morning. It just feels like someone actually wrote the email and it works really well. The next is day. So we could say something like happy Monday or happy day, like happy Monday, uh, first name, or hey, first name, hope your Tuesday is going well or sorry for the Friday email, wanted to catch you before the weekend. So it's not complete personalization, but we're referencing something that is not normally referenced in cold emails because it requires a skill to go and segment your campaigns by day or by time. So that's the idea behind this. And last is a standardized merge field. So again, a merge field is gonna be the same thing as first name, last name, title, just a row in an Excel sheet, Google sheet, whatever. And a merge field we can do is something standardized. So let's go ahead and say we were targeting B2B companies. We're targeting marketing agencies, let's say. So we're selling to marketing agencies. Now we can guess that 90% of marketing agencies will have a list of case studies on your website or B2B SaaS companies. Now for other industries, just be creative on this. What is one thing we could fill in easily for a virtual assistant that would take no time and could add it to our cold email? So I could say like, hi, first name, um, loved your case study with case study name. So if we go to a marketing agency and we see that they've worked with these five different big companies, we just take one, put it in a sheet, do it for everybody in our lead list. And now we have, hi, Michael, loved your case study of General Mills. Again, it feels like a personalized line, but all we did is put in just one single sentence. So these are all pretty low energy. Again, they're not completely easy. Nothing good is that easy, uh, but they work quite well and they're not hard to implement. So there you have it, that is number one. Number two is going to be segmented personalization. This is where you're putting everybody in a box with similar attributes and you're personalizing around those similar attributes. This can be based on your relation to something or just specific to one of those attributes in general. So let's talk about relation. So this would be your relation to a location, industry, business model, et cetera. Let's look at some examples, let's say location. Um, we could say, for example, where you study university. So like, let's say we have a list of people. I'll use myself, for example, I studied in Palm Beach, Florida. So we could say, hi, first name. Saw that company name was based in, um, company name is based in Palm Beach. Small world. I actually studied at PBA, which 
Palm Beach Atlantic University, everyone in Palm Beach will know. Again, it feels personal, but this works for thousands of businesses in that area. Now, it could be based on your relation to an industry. Um, I'll give an example here. My parents are in the uh, windows and blinds and shutters industry. So let's say, you know, let's just call it shutters. So industry, I'm relating to my experience in industry. So you say, hi, first name, um, having a family that works in the shutter industry, I know a thing or two and can tell you're doing amazing work at company name. Again, it feels personalized, it adds that connection point, but I don't need to write a different one to everybody. I can write this to everybody in the shutter business. We could also use a business model. So let's again, I'll use myself as an example. Let's say agencies, if I was targeting agencies, I could say, hey, first name, having been building agencies for seven years, I can tell um, how much blood, sweat, and tears you put into your company name. It's really clear. These aren't the best personalized lines I'm writing here. I'm just trying to give examples of how to use these standardized um, standardized lines to save you a lot of time and money. So there we have, those are three related to your relation to. And we could also do this just in general to a location. So for example, location, I won't write all these down. Let's say that we're targeting people in um, LA, for example. Um, and I'll give an example of how to write that. Not that I'd actually want to move to LA. I'll give an example. Like say first name, some company name is based in LA. Um, always wanted to go there. Maybe if we work together, I'll give you a visit. There you go. Or industry. Um, for example, if we're targeting, let's say we're targeting healthcare. We can say, hey, first name, um, love that you decided to build company name in the healthcare industry. Mass respect for you. Okay, business policy subscriptions, for example. You could say, hey, first name, I've always been super intrigued by the subscription model and it's eager to see, it's interesting to see how you built that into company name. There you go. So again, we're just segmenting by a standardized industry location. Uh, even niche could work here too, to feel personalized while actually writing personalization. And then we have a last, which is gonna be complete personalization. This is where we're fully writing a personalized line. So we have either you, the business owner, an employee, a virtual assistant, contractor, third-party agency, going through your spreadsheet, your Excel sheet, whatever, and adding a merge field that's a full personalized line. So it's, you know, a first name, came across company name, and fill in the blank. And generally these personalization, we want to be hitting on something that the business owner or whoever title we're reaching out to actually cares about. Normally company story or product features or location, or let's say charitable contributions, uh, contributions um, could be achievements such as awards, but this is complete personalization. And I'm gonna make a video on how I would do complete personalization, but I wanted to go over in this video just of three ways. Um, in my agency, we do entirely segmented personalization, general reference personalization, and I do pers complete personalization when I'm doing my own hyper-specific outreach of SDRs. But over to that, segmented in general, there gonna be a lot lower cost, a lot less errors, so I think one thing people will consider is on complete personalization, it's not only the cost, but it's the constant recruitment, the scale, and also a big part of it's quality assurance because doing a bad job on complete personalization is going to do much worse than just doing normal unsegmented or general reference or even none. So as you're deciding what to do, I would recommend leaning towards segmented and general reference with complete personalization, maybe just with SDR or two, if you really want to do that. Anyways, I hope this helped out. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Or if you want help one-on-one -on -one building out your entire prospecting system, go ahead and book a call down below at b2boutbound.io, and we'll see if we can help. Thanks, and see you in the next one.